So Wednesday is noted. We have big shows. NXT Great American Bash going head-to-head with Fighter Fest for AEW. On night one, both shows have five matches announced. For night two, AEW has six matches announced. NXT has one. So I presume they'll be giving us more matches this coming Wednesday. The Great American Bash has Io Shirai, Sasha Banks in a non-title match. Dakota Kai, Mia Yim, Candice LeRae, and Tegan Knox are having a four- fatal four-way elimination match for the NXT women's title. Now, that's interesting because Io Shirai, Sasha Banks, non-title. I mean, often those non-title matches, what would happen is Sasha Banks would beat Io Shirai, and that would build towards a title match. But on the exact same show, there's also a number one contenders match. So, I don't know what this means. It could mean nothing. But, I mean, do we really need Sasha Banks beating Io Shirai to become a number one contender? And on the same show, Tegan Knox, for example, wins the four-way, and she's also the number one contender. I mean, you could do it, but, I mean, we've seen what has happened when people from the main roster go to NXT, and they beat people, and then they don't do a job in the end. So, I mean... There's a possibility that Sasha beats Io to become number one contender. Tegan, for example, wins the number one contendership. And then we have another one of those three ways where Io beats Tegan and Sasha gets a win over Io but never does a job for anybody. I mean, after what happened with with Charlotte, I mean, I don't, I don't put that out of the question. I think it's stupid. I think stuff like this hurts NXT. Hopefully, that doesn't happen. But... We saw what happened with Charlotte, so anything's possible. Roderick Strong, Dexter Loomis, trap match, which, hey, listen, they set it up right. Roderick Strong went running. Now they got a strap match, so he can't go running. But that's also weird because, you know, it's Undisputed Era that wanted Roderick Strong to do the match. And then he ran away. So now he's being forced into a strap match? That's weird. Rhea Ripley, Aaliyah, and Robert Stone handicap match. If Rhea loses, she joins the Robert Stone brand. God forbid. And Oni Lorcan, Timothy Thatcher, which should be an awesome match. That's the lineup for Great American Bash. Do you think Roderick Strong is going to have to see a psychiatrist over over seeing a fake psychiatrist that has failed him now? So now he's a fan of of Trunks, Dexter Loomis, uh, and uh, men who wear, you know, he, he could be so thrown off by everything that he saw with uh, with Kyle O'Reilly. Now he's actually scared of Mookie Ghana, I've heard. All I know is I don't think I've ever seen a bad Roderick Strong match until this feud with Dexter Loomis, Well, which is all about comedy. I don't know, it's supposed to be comedy. I think it's supposed to be comedy. Definitely these skits with the psychiatrist are designed to be comedy. The, the rest Dude, of it, God only knows. I got confidence here. I think it's going to be Roderick Strong on on 10. He's going to be he's going to put on an amazing performance. I feel this. I do. In a strap match with Dexter Loomis? Yes, he's going I'll to I'll take gonna, that bet. We're going to see a full professional here, Roderick Strong after all of these years being tethered to that man. We're going to see an amazing performance. I feel it. Back in a moment with the Fighter Fest lineup, Wrestling Observer Live. Brian Alvarez here, Wrestling Observer Live. I'm Mike Sempervivi, also of WrestlingObserver.com. Come on, Post! Crying out loud. Washington Post? I'm trying to post on our board during the break, and then oh. this radio show gets in the way. Oh. <laughs> so you're hard boarding again here, I see. Nah, I'm just talking about the fact that in the old days, it's true. The most dangerous match in wrestling was the Battle Royal. All those different people in the ring all at the same time. Mm. All attacking you and beating on you. And then there's giants, freaks. It was scary. Scallywags and all. So what did you have any awful battle royal experiences you want to see? Everyone. They suck. (laughs) Now see here's the thing too. Most people when you talk about battle royal, I know I guess in some territories I guess they did hype that up and everything, but you know, fans don't think of battle royals as being scary and daunting situations. They're not scary and daunting, they're just dumb. No, but that's what we've heard for you know from guys who have worked them always say that they're scary and daunting because you never know when a an elbow is coming or something no, like that. No, that's just, all BS. Suck. Anybody who tells you that they're they're just telling you a dumb story. Oh yeah, so so you tell me a smart story about being in a battle royal. Being they a just worker. suck. You're like in there, you're standing around, 
You just feel dumb. Why don't you just partner up with somebody and take the free money? Actually, I, I guess did. you're not taking I the free money. I stood there in the corner with Buddy. We put each other in headlocks and just stood there while everyone else did dumb stuff. Then we just fell that, out and we're happy to be out of it. One of the reasons that older wrestlers also hated Battle Royals was because they were not getting paid usually a second time that night, usually as well, too, right? I don't know. Like, I, I didn't get paid a second oh, time. You, I was going to say, you didn't get paid like, No, sorry, but rarely did you work you didn't two get paid times. three times It was like, value. okay, well, you're either on the card or you're in the Geek Battle Royal. That's how it was. And occasionally, occasionally, it would be, well, the winner of the Battle Royal gets the title shot. Then you were like, God, I got to do a Battle Royal and another match? Like, it sounds cool if you're not in wrestling, but if you are in wrestling, it was like, what a waste of my life at the B&I Marketplace here. Just let me do a match and get out of here. Have to do a battle royal for 20 minutes and then do a main event. It's not like you got tired in the battle royal. You didn't do anything. But you had to stand out there like a numbskull for 20 minutes. And then, whoop de doo you win. Unless you were Vinny in which you shot in the battle royal to win. <laughs> True story. But man, not me. I hated that. Fighter Fest. Kenny Omega and Adam Page versus best friends for the AW World Tag Team titles. Cody versus Jake Hager. For the AW TNT title. Hikaru Shida, Penelope Ford for the AW Women's title. Jurassic Express versus MJF and Wardlow. And Private Party versus Santana and Ortiz. That's your lineup for Fighter Fest head to head with, with NXT. Had somebody asking on the chat, who do you think is going to win the ratings this week? I mean, honestly, you'd be a fool if you voted against AEW because they've won 98% of the time. There have been two times that NXT won, and this past Wednesday, I mean, if it was star power, then if you look at the lineups for these two shows, I mean, there's significantly more star power on the AEW show. So I don't know what's going to happen. This is not bias. It's just looking at past history. I expect AEW to win this Wednesday. And if it doesn't, that's going to be very interesting. Let me tell you. Absolutely, especially if there's no news that breaks or anything like that. Yeah, I mean, and I know somebody had asked me, you know, had pondered about, well, with all the allegations last week and things like that, AEW fans would be most tuned into those sorts of situations. Do you think it, uh, it had a effect? And on some people, yeah. I mean, there were enough people that said, man, I'm sick of wrestling right now that I don't think they're, they're going to quit for good. But if they did not watch anything last week because they were burned out over the last two weeks of allegations and everything else going on, yeah. You know, I, I think there were some people. But do I think it was a Dude. enough to make a statistical difference? No, not, not, not close enough. Here's, you know, here's just, a problem with that theory, okay? If nobody from NXT had any allegations... And Sammy Guevara ends up suspended, and uh, Jimmy Havoc ends up in rehab, and who only knows his future? Sure. But, dude, there's some big time... Let, let's compare the allegations, okay? Like, I don't even want to talk about the allegations for a certain individual, because WWE hasn't even... They haven't even announced an investigation. They've just been deadly silent on that person. But those are some pretty serious allegations. And the allegations against Jordan Devlin, I mean, if I recall correctly, his girlfriend posted pictures of, of bruises all over her body. I mean, compare that to, well, I mean, the Jimmy Havoc one is actually very serious. It uh, It's on par with the other two, but, you know, not to, to downplay uh, the Sammy Guevara allegations. But, I mean, if you're talking, you know, physical, like physical, serious allegations versus a guy who said something really stupid on a podcast... I mean, I just find it hard to believe that there would be two allegations in AEW and, and at least two allegations, and more in WWE, actually, because if you count NXT UK, and for some reason, like, people only decided that they weren't going to watch AEW because of it this week. Like, I don't know what that would say about the NXT audience, but I, I give them the benefit of the doubt that it probably didn't have anything to do with those things. Yeah, I agree with you, but I just, you know, and the thing, the only way you would have validity on that is you would have to prove that, you know, the NXT over 50 fan base that obviously is not tuning into the news, you know, where AEW's younger fans tend to be on nights where there were things breaking you know, they seem to have a much more galvanized fan base for NXT in, in some ways. Now, uh, you know, I don't know if that's a hell or high water fan base. It seems like it right now. You know, it seems like it for WWE that there are about one point. What did we figure out that one low rating about 1.3 million diehards? 
uh, th- that are you know pretty much going to be in there no matter what. So you know, again, I think the AEW fan base, I think in general, just to deal with you know one large stereotype, I think they are more sensitive and maybe more ear to the street with some of those issues. But again, statistically, I don't think it makes a difference. 